Margaret drew up radical plans for the house. She began completely redesigning the layout of the upstairs rooms, altering their shape and making them waterproof. The building had not been built to flood, and we're going to flood the place comfortably, knee deep, a little bit deeper. And I didn't want to just be indoors for so long, so the balcony as well. We flooded it, and it kept leaking, so we had to drain it all and plaster it up again. It took a while. They had a giant elevator. You'd get the animal on the elevator with a sling under it, and that's how the animal got up and down. Margaret had created a domestic dolphinarium, where she and Peter could live together in a semi-aquatic environment. I had a desk hanging from the ceiling, a telephone, and a little stove I could make tea. I was on a foam cushion, and Peter would sleep next to me, and he would sleep as long as I did. And I lived there day and night, and it was perfect. And so Margaret's extraordinary experiment began. Over the coming months, she would live with Peter in the dolphin house almost full time. Margaret would immerse him completely in her world to try to teach him English, like a mother teaching a child to speak.